we're talking about Goldman Sachs today, and I want to start off with David Enrich in London because the Goldman, I'll call him an ex-employee, I don't even know if he really was an executive, who came out with this scathing editorial in uh, one of our competitors, New York Times, about Goldman Sachs. Uh, David Enrich, I want to ask you, is this much ado about nothing, or is, is this guy leveling some real charges? Oh, it's definitely real charges. I think it's a little bit hyped up. I mean, his title is a little bit hyped up. Uh, he's not a very senior executive at the firm, but it's, they're definitely real charges. And it's something, it's kind of the Achilles heel for Goldman Sachs right now, this this accusation that they somehow put profits ahead of clients. And, you know, that's kind of what banks are, everyone knows banks do, uh, but it, it's especially a kind of bitter pill for Goldman right now that they have a, someone doing this, uh, you know, in such a prominent uh, form. Okay, David, I'm going to I'm going to do my I'm going to do my Casablanca thing. You just referred to it. I'm shocked, shocked, Ricky, to find out that there's gambling going on <laughs> yeah. in this casino. Goldman yeah, Sachs. Yeah, hold on profit. a second. Wait, now, wait. this is such this is such you know. Everybody immediately is like, oh, he's stating the obvious. Let's give credit for at least you know. Put aside, there are plenty of questions about was this guy of such a senior level or not, but. You know, it's an interesting point if you have someone on the inside saying, actually, I think the culture of the firm has changed and clients are being put first. When, what have we seen? What was the big deal with Abacus a year or two years ago, which Goldman, let's not forget, paid $500 million in terms of fine for in that it went against its clients. That's a serious issue. And I think the easy let's just dismiss him because the Wall Street view of, oh, anyone who rails against us, I, I don't think we should just be dismissing this out of hand. Okay, well, no, I, no I, one's, I, but no one's dismissing it out of hand. The question is whether Bob was you just. would. <laughs> I, but, yes, I was. <laughs> okay, I let okay, David well, well, Enrich talk. Let Enrich talk. The, but the, the question is how much credence you give this guy. In the op ed, it's, there's a lot of very inflammatory rhetoric. There's not a tremendous amount of examples. I mean, the, the classic line that everyone's talking about, and it's great, is that you know, some senior Goldman executives routinely re refer to their clients as Muppets, which, you know, is pretty damaging. But there's not, there's not a tremendous well, amount of I, substance, or de at least detailed substance uh, behind. There's no uh, detail, and I mean, he and he says he says he does not know of any specific examples of wrongdoing in the but editorial. But I'm this isn't about to, specific examples. I think what what the issue if is he's here. He's leveling the charges. It, he's leveling. Yeah, but no, but he if, should look, have at least this one. was at another firm. Where this hadn't been an ongoing topic of debate, I don't think people would pay as much attention to it. I think the reason whether or not there's a specific instance there is because the question, and this is an important question for Goldman, which has constantly said we put our clients first. I'll, you talk to people on the street, they don't believe that. This, even as much as people will snicker, this confirms for a lot of people on the street what they already think. And that's what the real danger is for Goldman in this. Okay, There's no well, question it's damaging reputationally for them. The question, though, is how much, for people who are actually in the business, how much this actually changes the debate. Because, again, there aren't, it's not like he's saying on this specific deal with this specific client, we did something wrong, or here's how we should have done it. He's, he's saying that in conversations, vague conversations, we rarely talked about what was good for the client. We talked about how to make money. And I really think the people who are actually in the business, that's going to surprise no one. Okay, that's David. Not to say it's not David, and to you, David, and to you, David, this culture changed in 1998 when Goldman came public. And it was no longer a partnership where partners <coughs> not only wherewithal but reputations were on the line, but they became a public company. And it was... Well, yeah, I think there is, and an talking with some people this morning, you've heard people saying also, you know, what, he just woke up to this change now? He didn't see this 12 years ago? So I think that there's a fair amount, you know, to be said about that. But I think as an issue, the question of our clients coming first, let's face it, it's really come to the fore in the past two or three years. And it's an open question If you look Goldman. at the history of Goldman Sachs, all you gentlemen, I, I'm sure you have, you, you are going to see going back decades, decades and decades and decades, these issues keep coming up. It is, Bob, is it, it is no shock that this kind of thing goes on on Wall Street. I mean, Goldman's done it, they've all done it. They've put themselves ahead of their clients. It has happened, let's not kid ourselves, it has happened. Okay. The question is, in this environment, with the way people think about Goldman, will this editorial hurt Goldman's business? Well, I don't My think guess this is one, probably not. one I mean, thing I, alone, if you, yeah. Again, there aren't, anyone who is doing business with Goldman has known for a long time this issue about the massive conflicts that they have, and the fact that they're, you know, they're not a partnership anymore. They're a, a publicly traded company. Their goal, their their initial responsibility is probably to shareholders. And I mean, to me, the thing that's kind of interesting is if you look at kind of the the screeds that have been most toxic for Goldman, I and mean, the vampire squid one 
in particular. The whole point of that is that Goldman, going back as long as it's existed, its entire purpose has been to profit off of for itself instead of for clients. You now, reading this op-ed, it's as if this guy who, and straight out of college, didn't really, it's, it's unclear to me how much he understood the culture right when he joined Goldman. And oh, there's also the issue, the guy worked in equity derivatives, he's dealing with hedge funds. I mean, you know, this isn't like he's, you know, trying to, you know, arrange, help corporate clients raise money. I mean, this is very different there. Yeah, but this is this is pretty sharp elbow stuff. And, I'm, you know, the, the, the thinking I have is if you're a Goldman client, you lie down with dogs. Well, I don't think it's lie down with dogs. In fairness, I mean, a lot of Goldman clients are there because they're very good at what they do, and they wouldn't be staying there if they weren't good at what they do. But, but I think that the risk here for Goldman is, that, let's put this in a longer context. We haven't really heard the debate of, you know, about Goldman and its culture for the better part of a year now. But suddenly, last week, we, Goldman is in the headlines all over again because of the Delaware uh, Chancery judge's decision right. over the uh, El Paso Kinder Morgan deal. Well, and there's an insider trading probe going on that they're getting right. tied up and, into. And now you have this. So suddenly the issue of Goldman, its culture, and its business practices is coming back to the fore. And, and that's... You know, one it's year. not Sorry, one, one specific year, article. It's when the conversation focuses back on them that I think it puts them, you know, back in the, the public crosshairs. And that's not a good spot for any investment bank to be. Okay, but they're not going to lose a client. They're not going to No, they're not going well, to lose, one, house they're house they're not lose one specific client over this. But if you go back to when the Vampire Squid article that David referenced came out in back Rolling in Stone. 09, everyone said they're not going to lose one client because of this. But I will tell you that that article helped shift public opinion widely, and that made it far easier for regulators to go after them on a number of fronts. It's not it, one it, little knife cut. It's more this, the direction of how okay, things are going. David, 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 David and I've got to get an back on this. Okay, they have, re they have released their, Goldman Sachs has given their side of this. What do they do now? Do they let this blow over? Do they try to address it more? What happens to Greg Smith? Does he disappear into the ether now? Is this his 15 seconds of fame? We'll see. There certainly are hundreds of journalists out there trying to track down who Greg Smith is and wishing that, uh, as one of my colleagues just noted, wishing that he had a slightly less uh, common name. Uh, it would make him much easier to find. Uh, I, just going back, though, to the, the issue of the clients, because I think that is the, probably the most important issue. There is one segment of clients that's especially sensitive to this type of issue, and that's public sector clients and governments, which are one of Goldman's biggest base of clients around the world. And it does seem point. plausible that they're going to be more responsive to kind of a public outcry over this and potentially could be the type of clients that think about uh, switching backs. All right, we've got to leave it there. David Anderson, London, thank you very much.